and welcome to another episode of Fuga. Today we are continuing with my favorite Raymond launches of 2021. So now is the time for the Amplify Studio. Amplify Studio was announced in the Werner keynote. It was one of the last announcements of the whole conference and it's amazing. You know, my love for Amplify and how I think it really, it's something we need to empower more our client developers, our front-end developers, and this is all about that. Last year, they announced the admin UI and that now changed into the Amplify Studio, so they are renaming it and it has more features. And one of the features that they announced is the capability of grabbing an existing Figma. So I'm a backend developer, I never use Figma. But for all of you there <laughs> that you work more closely with frontend, you know, this uh, Figma allows to share your components and your designs with your developers. So designers do all their magic in Figma and then client developers uh, will turn that into something usable and like a website or an application. So now this tool, what it does, it grabs that Figma design um, site that the designers done and it when you put it into the Amplify Studio, it will convert all those components into code. Uh, so it will create the components code automatically. And then you can connect all those components very simply with uh, the backend components that were created. So it's super powerful for empowering your developers. So now your front-end developers don't need really to create those components. They can focus on building the application and putting things in the right place and then by um, using the Amplify Studio they can connect very easily the graphic parts, the graphic elements, the graphic components with the backend uh, models and, and data models. So let's see it in action because it's always the easy thing. Let's go to the console and see it. So this is uh, the Amplify UI kit. Uh, I will leave you the link in the description box. You can basically get it if you don't have any Figma and get started. There is instructions there. So if you start exploring that, I, I never saw Figma thing before. So you are in here as <laughs> maybe as clue, clueless as I am. So don't worry. But basically this is something that you can uh, get started with. You just duplicate it and basically you can work with it. Then uh, in Amplify, we will go to our um, Amplify and create a new application. So we will build a new application. And this is something you can also do it in other ways. So I will not show you how to do it in other ways. I will show you the easiest step, but you can work on this on any Amplify application. And then uh, you create a name to the application as always, and you uh, launch the studio. So before this was the admin UI, now is the studio. So go to your backend uh, environment and launch the studio. So this is a simple demo about the launch. Uh, I will not show you more things, but you want to know how to integrate this into your development process. Let me know in the comments. I can make some more interesting videos on how to use this. So now you are into your Amplify Studio. It looks uh, like the admin UI and there is a new part there that says design and it says UI library. So here is where you want to put all your components. So how you do that? Well, you hook your Amplify account with your Figma account. So there is a big orange button there. You press it and then you need to paste your Figma file. To get your Figma file, if you're using this Amplify uh, link that I'm sending you, you need to duplicate this. It's, it, you cannot use the Figma file uh, I'm sending you. You need to create an account and duplicate it. And then uh, go to your profile and basically uh, get the link that uh, that gives you. Because if you uh, change the components or whatever, uh, this is your, your link. So after you do that, then uh, Amplify Studio will start uh, importing all the components and you can review them one by one. So you will see there all, all the components and you can accept or reject them into your project uh, because you might not need them all. Or then you accept them all because this is a fresh import. I will accept all uh, and that's great. 
So it takes a little bit, it imports all the components into your uh, studio and there you can see that um, there is uh, all the components there. We have 28 and you can see them and, and click around and explore what each component looks like. So these components are different cards, are different um, bits and pieces for, for making a website. So I'm so grateful for these components because I don't know how to code front end. So I will be using a lot of these ones. Uh, so now let's go to the content part and create a data model. So we have some data to populate in these uh, components. So you can see the full end-to-end -end thing. I will create a model. I will be using the Amplify Studio for creating a model. So we stay here and I will create a model for homes. And this will be a site like Airbnb or like a renting site or like buying homes. I have not really thought it very far away. So we put an address, we put a price for the house, we put the right type, and then we put an image URL. This will be a string of public image for these, uh, these uh, houses. This is, again, <laughs> uh, just a demo. Uh, but if you want to build something more complex, let me know in the comments. I'm more than happy to build a full application with these tools. Then when we have finished the uh, the data model, we deploy it. I just fast forward that super fast because there is nothing to see there. It takes a couple of minutes. And when we are ready, then we go back to content again and we click the auto generate data. This is something I really like for Amplify because it happens so much that you build a model and it's empty and you need to start typing all these random tests, one to like a cat has walked over the keyword. And now with this auto generate data, you can populate some data in your testing environments and you can add some constraints. So I really like this in this case, for example, for the address, we choose that uh, the setting is a street address. So it will look like an address and <laughs> not like my cat just walk over my keyword and the price will be somewhere in a reasonable number. So it's not just random numbers. So you can see that the data is getting created and then the image URL is just gibberish. So because we want an image URL, we want a real image there so we can show it. I will go um, into each of the images and change it for a static image that is publicly accessible on the internet, uh, some random house I found out there. And I changed that exact same image in all my different uh, random values and we're ready to go. So now let's go back to our library, our components, and let's pick the component we want to work with. I will pick the card B because why not? And then I will start configuring it uh, in order to populate the data in that component with uh, the right values. So here, if you want to use the same component for multiple data, what you can do is you can copy the component and then you will have two versions of it. Uh, so you can uh, assign it to different um, kind of uh, attribute of objects that are models or whatever. So it's no problem, but as I will do a demo, I have this, uh, <laughs> this data model. And the first thing you do is you go to the uh, root of the component and you change what is the, um, kind of main type of this, uh, component in our case is the home and we give the name home. And then from there, you will see when you go to child properties in each of these uh, elements in the components, the image and the text areas, you will see that when you click, for example, in the source, there will be this home uh, type there ready for you to consume. So you can see that the image URL is there and that's the image I choose from the internet, some small house. <laughs> and then uh, for the price, for example, I'm using this concatenate operation that you can concatenate a string or two values or whatever you want. And you can build a little bit more complicated um, string so that's nice in here it's the price and the number of the house price that we have in the in the database then you can also hide things so if you from the component that you don't need so you can make the components look a little different um, and also you can um, and then um, for example, here are here is an address and you can shuffle between the data. So if we have different prices and different address, the same image because I using the same image. This has one component and this component has all this data. 
So now what happens if we want to create a collection because sometimes we want to show these components uh, like a list or like a grid. So we can create a collection of these components. So it goes one more step. So just pressing the get, uh, create collection, we give a name to the collection and this creates a new component in, um, in our uh, uh, UI library. And you see that this component is not in Figma. So this is a component that we are creating in uh, our application particularly. So we just uh, create the new component and we navigate to it and you can see there that you can affect how this uh, house component new house components looks and you can decide how many columns if it's a grid if it's a list if it goes in this direction if it goes in that direction the padding all these things so you can play a little bit with it and then when you are ready you can start using that component in your application so uh, I'm just playing a little bit <laughs> with this and basically when I'm ready, now I press that get component. So here are the instructions to use that component right now in your application. But because this is the first time I'm uh, importing something uh, from Amplify into my application, I will be using the initial project setup. So this is something you only do once. The first time you're kind of getting these things to talk together for the first time. So I have created an empty uh, React project, the typical MPX create a React app. And I just basically did a little bit cleaning up of the app.js, so there is nothing there. Uh, so now I will, I run all these steps in order. I will not show it to you because it takes a while basically to install all dependencies. Uh, but basically I follow the steps one, two, and three. And here I am. <laughs> so now I can move to the steps of use this component. And the first step is basically to uh, do an amplify pool. And an amplify pool, what it means, it means that it will pull all the application from the cloud into your local environment so you can work with. So amplify pool brings down. And then if you're familiar with Amplify, we do a lot of Amplify push when we create infrastructure in our local environment. Push goes from your local into the cloud. So now we are pulling. And this, if it's the first time you're working with this, or I think it does it all the time when you're doing a pull, it will ask you to authenticate because uh, in this case, my computer, my user is not uh, connected with an AWS account. So this is great because your front end might not have access to AWS, might not have a user in AWS account. So they can still do everything. They can do their work without really needing an account. I talked about that in a previous video. Uh, so you can go there and check it out. So now we are uh, accepted, we are logged in, and then uh, we can basically start our work. Uh, the first time it will ask you for some configuration, if it's a Visual Studio, what kind of project, blah, blah, blah. And then it will ask you if you want to modify the backend locally here, just press no, makes your life easier. And then uh, it will get all the UI components and basically everything you need in order to run this locally. So good. Next step is to import that component. And if you want to see where those components live, you can go to your source and you can see a new folder there has been created, the UI uh, components, and there are all the components, the card B and the new homes and all that. So in our app.js that is pretty empty, I will just import that component and then we can basically use it. So the instructions are extremely great. They give you all the information you need in order to use it. So I have my server running. I just refresh it and I can see the six houses that we have uh, with the three columns and all the information that is in the test database that we just created. Uh, if we want to do changes in this collection or in the component, well, we do change in the collection. Now we have four um, columns, why not? <laughs> then what we do again is to pull the Amplify. So you can basically run uh, the Amplify pool again in the same environment. It will update the components. And then when you are ready, uh, it will ask you to authenticate again, I think. But that's kind of it. Uh, you don't need to configure anything. And then when this is up, uh, upload is complete, uh, download is completed, then uh, you are basically refreshing your website and boom, you see the changes. So that's super cool. I just did that, that no code change. <laughs> 
So that's it for today. I, I will not share the code with you because <laughs> it's so simple. Uh, it doesn't make sense. And you can basically follow the steps here and get exactly to the same place because Amplify does it all for you. But I leave you more information and documentation in the um, description of this episode so you can go and check it out. And if you like this type of videos, please give it a like, share it with your colleagues that might like it. And I see you in the next episode of Wap. Ciao, ciao!